Welcome to the Chatterbox with your girl Nicole Parchani. Today's guest is a longtime friend of mine. She used to call herself my telepathic twin when we were kids, Danielle Carboneau. I met Danielle living on St. Martin and spent a large portion of our lives together being in our small class at LU. Ever since I've known Danielle, she's always wanted to be a professional model. I had the privilege of watching her career grow and develop from her early days practicing poses to representing St. Martin at the elite modeling competition in China. Today, Danielle travels all over the world as a professional model working with top designers and brands. In today's episode, I had a chance to catch up with Danielle, bond over our shared memories, explore the dynamic world of modeling, and more. I know like I it's crazy like I swear really when we graduated I really didn't think that it was gonna be so like that's it like they're gone you know like because it's like we were pretty much together every day for years and like because our class was so small like we were literally a family and especially because we had beef with the administration it was like (laughs) we were really family you know like we (laughs) we were fighting as a union like it was a fight against the patriarchy it was like (laughs) it was us the establishment yeah maybe it was like yeah there was some tension there i think when we got to that age it was just like all these hormones and like i don't know what happened but i think we were also just crazy. over it we were just like yeah, can we, we were, live like, our life now like we obviously know what to do like can you stop treating us like kids exactly like that's exactly what i was just gonna say is that we had been in that same building for since we were literally children and it just i think we got to a point where we were like literally just on the brink but, of um, on a brink of adulthood excuse me and um yeah and we were just we just wanted more we wanted to get out we were kind of having like a bit of you know island fever but school fever (laughs) island school fever (laughs) and yeah and and i it is it is true it was kind of like a diaspora like we all just just like and it was crazy because it's like we we were all aware like it was happening like we were all applying for schools all like oh yeah where'd you get in not realizing like you know eventually we're all gonna have to go to these places and it's gonna be away from each other like yeah (laughs) yeah like completely all over the place like I don't think I mean I had a couple of of um people that I knew from school in Montreal because you know a lot of the French uh, yeah the kids or the french kids would go to montreal instead of france and then but the kids that went to the u.s were all going to different schools in different states and then in holland i'm sure there was a little crew there as well but for the most part yeah we were all on our own even if we were in the same general area we were at different schools and it, it definitely was kind of a really big transition for me at least because i was so used to you know, there's our life in, in St. Martin. And then it became really real, really quick. Like, yes, oh, I have to organize my time. I have to, you know, be responsible and make sure that I get things done with my own, you know, discipline and my own. Self-discipline. Exactly. And it, it became like a real, like, for me, it was like a real growing up moment because we had had, it was such a difference from our life back home. It was like cities and cold weather and two twenty thousand people at your school and it was just you know it was just nuts yeah for sure i guess how was it when you did first move up to montreal like where where did you go for school and like what were you studying and so i moved to an area in the city called Place des Arts, which is like the arts district it was super cute it was like this little res i i got into concordia and i was studying at John Molson under an international business major and but my res wasn't connected to the school it was like kind of it was a student res but it wasn't a Concordia residence and it was really cute but um it was harder for me to make friends because I didn't have like people that were like at my school at my age maybe doing the same major like it was just you know so it was a little hard for me at first I it was like I said, a culture shock and um, going to school was nice. I liked the kind of um, the, the, the schedule at uni where it was like, you know, you had a lot of free time during the day and, and your classes were rather interesting and, and it felt it felt nice and I, and I enjoyed it. But I think I was also a little bit just 
I wasn't totally happy. I wasn't totally, and that's normal because, you know, the, be- the beginning is always difficult. You know, that's a huge adjustment period and it's never going to be a hundred percent easy, but it was a little bit, it was like, I enjoyed it, but I was also a little bit struggling. Um, and I wasn't super, super happy with my major, like my elective or, uh, it's not my electives, my prerequisites were, um, were, were easy enough for me. Like they weren't like, like I was doing, I was performing relatively well, but I don't think my mind was all the way in it because I was, I was just kind of overwhelmed, you know, but I did like Concordia. It's a really nice school. And I guess like, when did you start? Cause I know, like, I remember at least when we were going to college, like you already had like a contract with an agency in Montreal or in Canada, mm-hmm. but I guess I'm curious, like, how did your modeling change from when we left the island because before that you were doing like some runway shows in different islands like Mm -hmm. you had just done the elite competition Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was lit like that was i that was so amazing to see you go do that yeah yeah exactly and like yeah and like just being on the island it was a not as like much having like catalogs or working with brands because we are such a small island but you were still able to go out there and like represent the island in modeling so I'm curious like how did it change when you actually were like in Canada and you were able to like be with the agency right so I will say it differed a lot because the you know in St. Martin and I think in the Caribbean in general I won't speak for all the islands because I I don't have you know, personal experience on everywhere, but in St. Martin, it was very limiting. Like I was, like you said, I was doing like little boutique runway shows for this little boutique in Simpson Bay. And then like that, you know, a little boutique over there. And I loved shooting with local photographers. Like there was um, a photographer, Dono on the French side that I hit up and he did some of my first um, like swim photos. And then also worked with a, photographer from St. Bart's named Jean-Philippe Pitet, who's a really, really amazing, talented photographer. And um, I would also just do photos with like Veronica and Jesse or, or, you know, our classmates. And I would yeah, just, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I was just like a full photo shoot with the Nikon or the whatever camera, amazing, expensive camera. They both always had really nice cameras and we would go in like Don Beach and we would like hop the fence into the villa next door that no one was living at. I feel you. Yeah. I remember that villa. We were so wild. Like we were just literally like feral children, like running around anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I just realized that I loved, I loved taking photos. And then I always kind of, everyone was kind of in my parents' ear, like she should do it. You know, she's tall. She's skinny. She, you know, she looks like she could potentially do that and I always wanted to because I always looked up to like models like I, I looked at I remember our days of America's Next Top oh Model God, marathons yeah, for that. our sleepovers like yeah. we would just go through the season just being like yeah if that was us this is what we would have done like, yeah, we would have so much fun like watching America's Next Top Model now I watch it and I laugh because it's like literally not realistic at all and it's like genuinely just reality television but it was so entertaining and I still love it because it's so entertaining and I love to to be honest they like to kind of judge it and be like oh like you know yeah <laughs> like that's so toxic like how could you say that like yeah exactly. like different time different time <laughs> it was a, it, it, you're right it was a little bit of a toxic show but um if, if not very but um yeah I had this in me from a young age and so I wanted to get into it and I was doing all those things I mentioned and then um, I, a lot, like you said, Elite Modeler came along, which was my first real taste for what the professionaling model, professional modeling world is like at that scale. So um, I was nervous. I, I don't think I was ready. I wasn't really in tune with my power. I wasn't at a you know the maturity level that I'm at now. And I think I just, um, but. Nonetheless, I was chosen and I went and I think I performed well. I had so much fun. I made really great friends and it was so exciting for me because I'd never done something like that before. And I got there and it was just, it was really overwhelming. And we had all these events we had to do and it felt like almost like a celebrity because, you know, all these, you know, people in Shenzhen are like running after us and taking photos and we're yeah like, doing your hair your makeup yeah, every day and we're doing shoots and runways and we're going to 
this and we're cutting ribbons and doing events and I was like I'm like 15 or I was like 16 and I'm like my eyes were like you know Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I was just so excited and um I didn't get into the finalist circle but it was it was enough of uh, like obviously I was a little bit upset but I wasn't really because I felt like I had just accomplished something so great and when exactly. I got back, yeah it was like I was really like you were the first one, like the yeah. first one from our island to ever go and even do that, like without yeah. like a proper, you know, coach to be like, Danielle, this yeah. is how you're supposed to walk down the catwalk and exactly. how to do all these face movements, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah it's true. And and I was, I was proud of myself. And but it, there was a part of me that really wanted to continue and, and kind of pursue that path further. And so once we did graduate and I moved to Montreal, I got with an agency called Specs. And when I was at Specs, I wasn't working too much in Montreal, to be honest. And um, that could be for a number of reasons. I think that um, Montreal is not necessarily one of the cities where you're going to have like a lot of jobs, a lot of castings, like you're going to have some good castings, like, you know, um, e-commerce or some, maybe some editorial work and a lot of commercial work, but the castings were not frequent as you would have in a city like New York or Milan or Paris. And so I was working here and there, but I didn't start to really like, you know, understand what it was to do it full time until I went to Milan and the reason I ended up in Milan was because actually an agent from my Milan my eventual Milan agency came to my Montreal agency to scout girls and, mm. and then I got that opportunity so it was, it was a whole like you know it snowballed Sweet. I guess, like, yeah. how is it when you travel abroad for modeling? I guess before COVID, and I guess like now with COVID. With COVID, <laughs> yeah. Um, before COVID, it was really, really fast paced. So I was based in Montreal at the time when I first went to Europe for work, and I, when I first got to Milan, I was really, really nervous, and I think that's understandable because yeah, I, I bet I was. 18 or 19 you know and I was going by myself to a city that I had never been to where I don't speak the language and there where I don't know anyone and so I was like really nervous because you know you're also living in a model apartment which is an apartment that the agency owns or rents or whatever and they host girls and you kind of just it's there's an influx and an outflux of girls so you know you can be there for two months and you'll have two sets of different roommates because girls come and go, but it's mm. very like, you know, you have to live with strangers and you have to learn how to navigate the city and, you know, learn a little bit of a language that you don't know. And so it's all very like, you know, it's, it, it's again, overwhelming, but yeah, at, at first I was really, really not enjoying it. I was like, this sucks. The, when I went the first time it was in the summer and it was like, so freaking hot and my model apartment didn't have airco and the only like sense of cold in my apartment was the freezer so i would oh, i'm dying <laughs> i swear on my life i would put my hand in the freezer and i would just stand by the fridge and that apartment was just so janky it's hilarious actually they first put you in a nice apartment and then they move you they're like oh sorry it's not like you're not good enough anymore we yeah, got no. you now yeah. you're just gonna <laughs> <laughs> okay nice is a strong word the, the other one wasn't that nice either but it was better and then like it had airco and then this one was just so janky it was so janky but after that initial period of hating it and just wanting to go home it was also very like you know you had five castings a day and you had to get on the tram and on the metro and then you have to wait in this line and then you most of the time you're not booking anything so you start to question your ability and and honestly that's one of the worst things you can do because it's really not about you like yeah you know if the creative direction is decided before you even walk in the door and you have to fit the idea of what they want it's possible you can change you know they can see you and be inspired but for the most part you never know what's going to happen and the creative direction it's an artistic direction and you're a product you're a look you're an aesthetic 
and you have to fit into what they want, what fits mm. their aesthetic, right? So you can't take it personally, but when you're young, you don't realize that that's the case, and you're just like, oh, maybe I'm not doing well, yeah. what, you know? And so you, there's this whole mind game you play with yourself, and you have to really be, you know, your, your number one supporter, you yourself, because it's so easy to get, you know, really down on yourself. But after some time, I started to love it. I made friends friends and being in a european city is is amazing so like goals yeah. like yeah. oh my god i feel exactly like yeah goals. exactly and so it's it's just a dream especially italy it was incredible so i had i started to go out and we were going to lovely restaurants and and i was hanging out with my girls and we were going shopping and going to get bubble tea and we were we were just having so much fun and so it really really rebounded i really started to have a great time and then it caused me to go back a second time during the fall where it was um, fashion week. And then I stayed for longer than that. I stayed up until like December, like from September to December. So I stayed a really long time and I worked a lot during that time. I worked a showroom for Donna Karen, New York. I did a awesome. Dolce, Dolce eyewear show and I did. Oh gosh, girl, that is so lit. So lit. Like, so much fun. And then that is awesome. I haven't been there for work since I've been there since but I haven't been there for work since I actually have the um invitation to come back with a new agency in next month but I think I'm gonna go in the the new year instead just because of you know a lot of different reasons but that city keeps calling my name and I love it and it would be fun to go back because now I, I've, I've done it and I, I understand how it goes and I you know it won't be as scary yeah <laughs> For sure. That is that is amazing. I guess like how does fashion week week work as a model? So is it like you cast as many designers that are going to be presenting their new catalog during fashion week or yeah, I'm clueless. So fashion week is yeah, so there's a, a summer, spring, spring summer, excuse me, and then there's a fall winter and some designers have like shows in between for like capsule collections or like a resort or whatever but the big ones are spring summer fall winter and so as a model you go out to as a very successful model that has booked a lot of high fashion shows and has a, a real foot in the door and and people you know everyone knows who they are they don't necessarily mm. have to do those um castings where you wait in line and and um you know, walk and that that whole thing. But for most girls that are trying to make it, you have to go to the city that you're sent to or that you're trying to book fashion week shows in. Yeah. And you have to go out like a week or two before, um, like just you have to give yourself enough, enough time to do the castings. And then you just do like as many as you can. So you're going to, you know, let's say we're going to use big names in Milan. You want, you, you go to the Prada casting, you go to the Armani casting, you go to the Jill Sander casting, you go to the Off-White casting. And most of the time, those lines are just gnarly, just so huge and so scary. And you wait there in your little heels or most girls actually just wear like boots and bring heels in their bag. But, you know, you're waiting there and it can be really exhausting and stressful because you're constantly just running around and you're trying not to sweat because you're like running around and you, you know, it's just, um, it can be really, really a lot. It can be a lot, but yeah, you just try to book as many shows as you can for that season. Even if you just book one, that's better than booking none. It's really hard to book fashion week shows because they have a limited, um, they have a limited space for for the amount of, of models that they can that they can take on and most of the time a number of those spots are filled already with girls that they've pre-selected so there's an even smaller window for new or aspiring girls to you know get a spot so it's really competitive but yeah you just you know you work your ass off you run around you go to every casting as many castings as you can and you hope for the best and even if you book just one show that's really good because it's hard to book even just one show so um some girls go to these cities and never book anything you know so it is a feat to to 
to get at least one or more, you know, that's really good. So it can be, it's a crazy time. Um, and it, it's quite exhausting, but, um, it's rewarding in the end. Cause once you start to get your, you know, you, you get your feed and you understand how it goes and it can be exciting and you book something, it's a huge confidence. Yeah, boost. I bet. And I mean, I think it's just awesome. Just having the opportunity to like meet all of the different designers and see like the amazing work that they do. I guess of all the designers that you've had an opportunity to work with, were there any that like are your per like favorites that you're like, I really love the campaign. I love the look. Like I love the whole process. The whole experience. I mean, the, that Dolce eyewear thing I did in Milan was probably my, my favorite experience in Milan because, um, uh, the entire experience just through and through the venue, the, the hair and makeup, the actual show. I made friends on that job. We went to this incredible castle. It was like, it, it wasn't like a, a clothing runway. It was a, a eyewear presentation. So it wasn't, there wasn't the pressure of, of, you know, walking perfectly and, 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 you know, it was, it was kind of, there was less pressure in that sense. And it was a really relaxed vibe. And I, I worked with a lot of girls from my agency. So I had a lot of friends there, like my roommate and then our, the two girls next door all booked it. And so we got to do it together. And it was just so dreamy. The, the place was huge and just so intricate and, and just extravagant. It was really, really amazing. I did not enjoy the Donna Karen showroom. <laughs> it was uh, it was one of those jobs that it was good to have because it was um, regular work and you were going in every day and making money, which was, you know, necessary. Yeah. How does the money part work? Like, I, I guess because you keep talking about like working in the jobs, but how, how do you actually make money as a model? It's really hard. It's it's there's I don't know why it's not um, better regulated because. So it takes about two months to get paid from a job, um, from a client. And that's through an agency because the agency takes a percentage. And in Europe, it's a really high percentage. In the U.S., it's a lower percentage. But I believe in Milan, it was 40% of your earnings they take. And then living in a model apartment, which is what most girls do because they have no choice, um, they take your rent from the your 60 percent so mm. it's really hard it's really easy to go into debt you're going into debt from the moment you arrive actually um and yeah you just you have to hope that you work enough to pay it off or at least break even so that you're not in debt anymore it's really really difficult i think once you're a bella hadid you know you make millions of dollars you you make a lot of money and and it's not even an issue but when you're starting out it's really difficult to to make money and it's one of the really unfortunate parts about the industry because a lot of young girls need I mean everyone needs money to survive and, and yeah exactly you, you have to have some sort of compensation for it to be worth it so yeah. it, it is kind of a struggle but you are always hoping that your ability and you know just luck at the end of the day will will kind of guide you in the direction of success and you know just a, a decent income <laughs> i guess like does runways versus like catalogs like pay differently or is it all the same once you're hired with a designer i would say that runway doesn't pay as if, if i might be wrong about that but um it doesn't pay much or not at all, but catalog, you know, uh, shoots definitely do, especially if you're doing um, some kind of commercial work. It's funny because you would think that the higher end stuff pays better, but in fact, the commercial stuff pays better. And really and truly campaigns, I think, pay the most because uh, most often it's like, a, let's say you have a fragrance campaign, that'll pay a lot. or even just a clothing campaign where they're putting you on a billboard or in a magazine or like a, in a very like notable advertisement, you'll get paid a lot. Um, and you'll get paid 
more depending on your interesting success, you know your your standing as it is so so then is runway just more of like to show like who's popular yeah, exactly and it's a way for for designers to um see your ability and become familiar with you and book you for other stuff and yeah it just puts your face out there so once you're doing good mm. shows you have you're on the fast track to real success and um yeah so that's why it's so so important and it's one of the funnest funnest parts about modeling runway so exhilarating it's such an enjoyment. yeah oh a squirrel <laughs> <laughs> I saw a squirrel. Sorry. <laughs> Even the few runway shows I did, you know, in high school were thrilling. Like I, yeah. that, those are experiences. Definitely, I see why people, you, why you want to be a model because yeah. you feel so amazing. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're, you look cute. Like you have all these cute fits. Like you're mm -hmm. just really feeling yourself. Like exactly. very empowering. Very, it very is empowering. Very That's empowering. the right word. Yeah, I guess like you, you were mentioning like as you got older, like you felt more empowered and like understood your aesthetic more as a model, I guess, how do you, how would you, I guess, looking back at like younger Danielle, what advice like would you give her about what you would then have to go through to, to be like the confident model that you are? Today? That's a great question. I would say it's, it's really important to, to, I think honestly it does come from just time you know like it, the, it you have to be patient with yourself and you can't you have to trust that things happen at the right time and it's so important to not compare yourself because it's just there's no point because every single model is unique and that uniqueness is your strength so it's important to be have the those positive talks with yourself and and not allow yourself to get in a really negative mind state or a negative uh or have a negative self image or perception because everyone is has their own strengths everyone is beautiful in their own way and you will become the best version of yourself with time because you have to to have you know those opportunities to get to know yourself and to make mistakes and to find out what you're good at and everyone's timeline is different and if you know just because you know you're the girl that's 18 and you're also 18 is already doing all the big shows doesn't mean that you won't be successful in the future everyone is different everyone has their own you know journey and path and it's important to really just say i'm here for a reason I have potential and if it's not going to work out, that's okay too, because everything that's going to happen is going to happen if it's meant for you. And if it's not better, things that are more suited to you will come your way. So it's important not to get down on yourself and keep, keep your head up high and take the experience for what it is. And just try to enjoy every moment because there are some really, really incredible moments to be experienced. And those negative moments are, you know character building and it's important to know how to deal with those those negative experiences and 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 kind of change them and turn them into like take things the good things that you can take from them the lessons the you know all of that stuff so i think i definitely found my kind of strength just with just through through, through travel to be honest travel was a big part of my development into my identity into my just my perspective on life and I would say that that was probably the best thing I could have done was the travels so frequently for those two or three years it really forced me to mature and kind of understand how to come off as professional and how to and just being exposed to different cultures to you know to be in yeah. different cities and different languages it, it enriches your soul it enriches everything and and I think that it really helped me kind of, everyone thinks I'm a lot older than I am. And I think that's part You're also, I feel like you've always been that way. People have yeah. always thought that about you. Like yeah. everyone always thinks that Danielle was the oldest in the class. I was like, no, Danielle's yeah. the, like, the baby. The youngest. Me and my the baby of the class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, I would say, I know that was kind of long and convoluted, but it's it is important no i thought it was very well said i Thank think you. yeah i think like you. you've shown like yeah like you just gotta you can't 
I feel like it's easy in like with social media to compare yourself to other people and to be like, am I doing enough? Why am I not doing enough? Or, but you're right. Like you just have to trust like this is your unique journey and only you're going to experience it. Like and to be there for the good and take the bad, you know? Yeah. When, when it comes. But I guess like what do you do in your downtime when you're not like doing stuff for modeling? What, I guess like what do model what do models do you models know when they're pretty. when they're not working? <laughs> oh <my laughs> or are God. you ever not working? Like I'm, I'm not working a fair amount. I would say especially during COVID. Oh, that's something I didn't touch on was that it it has changed a lot, a substantial amount since the pandemic. Um, for the most part, I didn't work at all um, until this summer, and um, that's just because there was no work. Um, but I did. Um, funnily enough, this might be funny. But to some people, but I got a job at a dispensary. I was hey, like, girl, dispensary. living your life. Yeah, I was like, get okay. you the discount. Yes, you honey. know, I literally <laughs> top shelf. Don't know how I found it. Like I was, I think someone that worked at the grow was found me on Instagram and messaged me like, hey, do you want to tour this grow? And I was like, yeah, I want to tour the grow. Sure, I love, of I like, I love weed. I like weed, so I don't know. If that's... <laughs> hope that's all right hey say what you want to say <laughs> i do i do i don't smoke it like i'm not like a heavy stoner but i enjoy weed and so i was like okay yeah i want to go toward that grow and then i got offered a job there and it was like on the brink of the pandemic and i was like okay well no one's gonna be able to work i'm not really gonna stay sane if i have to stay at home and i want to stay in la so i was like i'm just gonna get a job i don't care if it's like not paying that much i want to have something to do i can save money because there's nothing to spend money on right now like, I'm just going to save money. And it was really actually quite an, a, a good idea because I ended up needing to get Invisalign and I was able to pay for it. So it was a really good use of my time and it, it kept me busy and um, it was considered an essential service in California. So I was one of the, <laughs> isn't that funny? Hey, <laughs> pot is important. Pot is it important. keeps the people sane, you know? <laughs> people are right with staying at home <laughs> yeah exactly makes so, home very fun yeah so exactly it makes home all you want to do so i yeah i did that for three months i stopped and then i did it again for a month or so um later in the year like in december so yeah so i, I was working but not modeling and then this summer uh, as the you know the final lockdown ended work kind of sprung up immediately and I started booking some really big clients in LA like IMG and Dolls Kill. I know you've um, been killing it. Uh, I love and actually it kind of relates back to when you said if there are teams that you really enjoyed working with and uh, Dolls Kill is one of the, my favorite uh, teams that I've ever worked with because everyone that works there is so cool and so creative and artistic and they all are like they look like they should work at Dolls Kill. You know what I mean? Like they all have super cool style, the piercing. They're tattoos. a part of the culture. The yeah. culture is very clear. <laughs> exactly. So it, it's really always just so much fun shooting with them. And I remember the last shoot I did, I did some of their e commerce, but the last shoot we did, we went on Hollywood Boulevard and um, I was literally, I had this like 2000s hair going on and um, I was shooting with this girl, Pearl, and we were literally at like the uh, there's like some Oscar statues, like the gold statue that that the Oscar man, but like life size. And they have yeah. on the somewhere on Hollywood Boulevard. And we were there shooting in bikinis on Hollywood Boulevard. And like all these people started like stopping. And like I was a little bit like, mm, don't look at me. But it was fun. It was iconic. Like the photos came out so cool because you know. Yeah, they are amazing. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, an they're iconic amazing. street. So um, it was a really fun day, and that was in the middle of a kind of a crazy whirlwind of stuff happening this summer. I was traveling to Europe quite a bit, and then I was I traveled back to LA for that job, two two jobs actually, and then I had to fly to Mexico for three days and work, and then I flew back to Europe. So I was like all in these all these different time zones, and I was exhausted. So cool. But it was it was fun, and I honestly it slowed down a little bit now, and I was so thankful because I had been so so on. The You're like I need a break. <laughs> I I literally needed a month of recovery. I was so exhausted, and and I think it can get really really exhausting, and it's important to prioritize sleep because you know also with all of this comes parties and fun things, and you know all these these kind of 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 
just continuing your exhaustion, you know? And then you really have to, I've learned, one of the things I've been working on lately is really prioritizing my rest and my recovery because I can get really, really easily into um, just too much, you know? <laughs> just too much. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, honestly, I'm so grateful. And I'm I'm going to see what, how the next couple of months play out. I'm not totally sure about where things will go or where I'll end up. And I never really do. And I kind of love it because I think I'm the kind of person that needs a, like a constant kind of influx of new things and experiences and people. And I, I thrive off of just, you know, kind of a fast paced, almost unstable lifestyle, to be honest, which is, you know, so for some people, like a nightmare, like a lot of people want stability. And I know that I will eventually. I think I just need to get this out of my system. But there is something about me that loves different, you know, experience every day, a different set, a different team. I feel, and, I feel like it's just yeah. dream goals. Like me right now, I'm just trying to build my wealth so I can go gallivanting hey, across Europe. Well, and I support that being like, Danny, are you coming on the boat? Are you coming uh, on the yacht this weekend? <laughs> always been so set for success like you have you are so smart you are Aww. so organized you are always like you know how some people need to be guided or told or you're not you, you always took initiative and you you always knew what your goals were and you never let anything get in the way of that and that's why you you're or true. you are now at such a young Aww. age you're so successful already and and it's really quite amazing to see i i definitely am so, like i like, I think about this a lot, and how much I miss our class, like, because I'm so grateful for all of you, because I feel like, honestly, like it, we all are who we are because of all the time we spent with each other. And like, I feel like we were such a broad spectrum of different personalities, but we were so like brutally honest. Well, I mean, we were all by the end, brutally honest and like yeah. open <laughs> with each other. Yes, we were. which i feel like you don't really see a lot you know in the world like there's a lot of fakeness or like just shallow shallowness but we, i felt like with our class we were we were family like we were genuinely like family like that that's your fam we like that's the squad like yeah, that those we, are your we were, homies we were, yeah we were so close and i think we were because we, we spent it wasn't like we were just high school classmates we were like middle school and elementary school and like it was like i mean obviously you know some like you came in sixth grade and some people came in like eighth grade and whatever but for the most part we were really 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 close for a lot of years yeah and we had to and it's like eating. even outside of that we would meet outside like we exactly. did cub scouts together yeah and, oh like, yeah i remember that yeah cub scouts and rachel was there right yeah for like a weekend <laughs> <laughs> it was like i'm good <laughs> thank you next <laughs> Shout out to Nina's grandma. <laughs> yeah i know like i i look back at all of the things that we used to do like just even going to tintamar and yeah. just like like spending days like at pinel and like pinel. doing beach cleanups oh and going God. to st bart's for like foreign language trips Isn't really what so did we bougie. do we just went to the beach i didn't realize how cool that was at the time like, i know like, like oh let's vacation at st bart's and i was like I right was go there for field trips with with Mr. Hernandez. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like when I think about it, I'm like, yeah, no, we were definitely hella bougie. But I feel like that's just island life. Like that's literally island life. I mean, they, and that's why mean, I'm so grateful to, to be from there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm so grateful too. We we had such an incredible experience. You know, growing up around that nature, first of all, that beach and those those vibes. You know, that very like you know, life is good, life is great, like, we have to go to the beach after school, we would go to Soggy, and then we would hang out at the beach the next day, then we'd go to Tantra, and go to the beach the next day, and then go to school, <laughs> you know, it was just like a, it was just not so your much. average kid experience, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Yeah, it was so special. And that, La Bamba, remember La Bamba? We'd all pull up to La Bamba with our cars. <laughs> I do remember La Bamba. I was honestly sad when they, like, closed it. I was I like, know. this place mm -hmm. is a vibe. It was you know, special. It is very much a vibe. Yeah, and I feel like I haven't, I haven't been there in so long that I don't 
there's probably a bunch of new spots that I have no idea. The island is this. different. Like, yeah, it, after like there's a lot of stuff that's similar, but like, like bamboo's not there. Like Tantra's not there. Wow. Like now it's Lotus. Like where, uh, what used to, be? Uh, you know, where like that old movie theater used yeah, to be, like upstairs. right, like across Karita. Like uh-huh. yeah, it's like different. Like even Little Bamboo is like in a different place. Wow, it it is like different, but I feel like the essence of the island is still the same. Okay. You know, the same like just chill, like laid back, like we're in our own little time machine that's slower than the yeah. rest of the world. Yeah. Exactly. I, I miss it. Home is just I'm just like, why did we leave? Like I'm just like, why did we have to go to college I anywhere know, right? else? Like imagine if we could have went to college like on the island. That'd I swear sick. it would have been That'd be awesome. But honestly It would have been a crazy time. <laughs> honestly, I feel like it we just I think we would just be different people. Like, because I think that leaving is, it. It is good. Helped. Yeah, it helped us. But I do agree that we, we, I need to go back. I won't speak for you, but I, I think it's it's important to kind of come back to our roots, you know, and 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 feel that energy again, and and feel that warmth and that familiarity and the love. It feels and, safe. Like yeah. it just feels like a nice warm blanket just yeah. wrapped around you. But yeah. you're like you're home, and it's like. A place where like these are your people like this is your country this is exactly. your you know this is yours where we're like sometimes i guess when we're here where we're not home it can sometimes you forget like it feels weird because it isn't yours but exactly and say martin feels like here. it feels like it is because it's also smaller and and you know it's every you know every corner of it you know and you know you see people you know every time you go out in your car and you you're driving on the street and you see people passing the other way and it's, it's really special so yeah like, different it's special exactly. yeah Very from special. an island it's it's just hard to explain and i think a lot of people people kind of ask me about it they're kind of like i mean i'm sure they ask you all the time too like it's it's hard to explain <laughs> you know it is it is hard it's really hard and i think it's it's it shouldn't be, but it is because it's like a, the kind of experience that I think really is a formative. It, it forms you into the person that you are. And it's kind of hard to really articulate experiences of that st- strength, you know? It's like, I can't explain it to you. It just is. It makes us awesome people. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, like you just have to go there and see it for yourself. Yeah. Like, I can't really explain it, but I promise you. If you go there, you will understand the energy that we're yeah, talking about, exactly. like the, that feeling. And that's why so many people move there. It's because yeah. like it's our parents. contagious, like it's addictive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like our parents, yeah. like I think back and I'm like, my parents just moved to this Caribbean island right? and like had a whole family and was exactly. just living life. And like thinking back, I'm like, that sounds lit. Like that that's is lit. lit. That like, some other shit. It was awesome. I know. Like. <laughs> crazy like and they just made it work like they made it work somehow and they all it's so crazy because i feel like so many of us and in our class at least our parents are not from there like bodine dutch alanda and i don't know where her dad's from but um uh you know everyone i mean i know jay has some family in in anguilla and st part i mean in st martin but um a lot of us like we you know shika shivani uh, Maxime, you, me, a lot of us, our parents are not from there. And we kind of, there was like this entire, it was like a whole melting pot. Our school, the exactly. island, everything. Like we were each different. Like none of us were identical in any shape where form. Anyway. Like we were each unique. <laughs> yeah, all of us had such a unique vibe. It's true. And that's what we, I think we each brought a really, we, we each played an important role and we, we're all a piece in the puzzle of our class, you know? Yeah. And, and it all balances out in the yeah. end. Like, as much as yeah. the adults hated us, like, we all appreciated <laughs> our little family. Like, you know what I think about sometimes? I think about how we literally paid for most of that cruise ship trip and we didn't go on it. <laughs> hey, it was a, it was th- things that we don't talk about, you that know? That was we, such a mess. It was such a mess. We leave it in the past. We, we so pretend. Sad. 
What did I think we're do? the only class that didn't ever have a senior no, trip. No, we had poor planning for that for some reason. But I think it was also it was also because we didn't want to pay for the teachers tickets. Oh, really? Like we were like we were like the class that like that were like really stubborn on that fact that we oh. didn't want to pay, or like because we were the ones doing all the fundraising work that it was unfair that like all of the money that we generated. Like it could cover us, but then right. we, it would cost us more to cover them. And right. we just had a disagreement that could not be rectified. <laughs> and you know what? Rage against the machine always. Exactly. Like they, I feel like I honestly admire our high school because it showed us at a very young age how full of shit adults can yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. And we weren't afraid of it. Exactly. And I think like why I love us is because of the fact we weren't we were like we saw what they were doing and we were like, no, this is not OK. Yeah. Like, I am done. You are not about to control <laughs> us anymore. Like, stop this. I love anarchy. that we, we checked out so early mentally, like two months. Because we knew like <laughs> it was like we knew we knew what we were in for. And it was like, this is just going to be rough until we get out of here. <laughs> yep, exactly. We we. All of us were just so over it. And I think we were ready to go on to the next chapter. But um, it is really, really crazy how it, I, I look back on, on, you know, sometimes on our classmates and, and uh, on social media and I see how people have changed. And I, it's, it's crazy because in, it's been five years and, and so much has happened in that time. And we've all grown into, you know, who we are and what we're doing. And we, it's, it's crazy when you grow up with people for so long and everyone can relate to that but when you grow up with people in in kind of a you know a space a place like an island you 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 only have your island you're not you know your your sphere of existence is the island and it's crazy to see how each person changed from like their how they were there into how they are now and it's it's quite an evolution <laughs> for sure for sure i guess like now living in la are you an la girl Huh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that just because I personally don't use that term positively. <laughs> You're like Harsha, um, you can't say that here. <laughs> I will take it because I I do love Los Angeles and and I have become uh, a happy citizen of Los Angeles, but um I would say I'm still a Caribbean girl. I think I kept that spirit and and I don't think it will ever leave. I would I would say that I'm too too um chill and and I don't really care enough about the superficial things to be an LA girl. Bro, I love you so much. Like I'm just like you have not changed a bit, which is perfect cuz I'm just like damn, like I like this just makes me know like my missing of y'all has been I am not going crazy. Like there's a reason I miss y'all so much. Yeah, just our class though. I yeah, don't. I don't want to see other other older or older no. teachers. I'm good. No, no, we don't need to do that. But it would be super fun. I mean, I'm sure that's that's something that will happen, even if it's not. I mean, five years. Is I feel like someone's five, gotta take ownership and be like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm planning this, guys. Just yeah. just but show it's, up. It's hard to get people in the same place, like all all everyone, and, and you know, At we're the only same 25, time, yeah. so it could be it could be possible because we're not like a class of 100 people it's possible if we planned it enough in advance but not everyone's gonna want to i, I mean i'm sure some people don't want to but i would love to <laughs> hey the ones that want to come will come but yeah. before that even starts you got to come see me in washington yeah. or i need to come to cali the, yeah. this needs to occur because i'm like you're so go. close i'm like hi sometimes i think like oh shit like should i be a better friend because like i don't always follow up with everyone all the time hey, but i'm also normal. like bro it's life people grow and are busy you know like it's, it's all good and honestly i'm the kind of person that really doesn't take that um uh, to heart because i'm not great at really reaching out to people and it's, it's not even an, an indication of my feeling towards them because i have love for pretty much everyone in my life and i genuinely care and and want the best for you know my friends and and the people that are important to me and that are significant that i have you know significant experiences with and memories with and um 
I'm just not the greatest at, at keeping up or messaging or checking in. And I think that's just because I get wrapped up in my own stuff and my own whirlwind of things. And, um, I think that's normal though. I think it's normal. Like, so I, I don't, I, I totally get what you're saying. And I think, I think most people are like that. You know, some people take it to heart when you don't reach out, but I think it's a mature thing to understand that people are in their own head and it's not anything to do with you, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I guess it's like we're growing older and I'm just like, why, yeah. why does it have, why yeah. is this happening? Like, <laughs> We are getting older. Wow. How old are you now? 23. Yeah. Turning 23 next in like two weeks or whatever. Three weeks. I, don't know. I know. Your birthday is coming up. It is becoming Libra season. It is Libra season. Love Libra. Libra girls are fun. <laughs> I don't really, I'm not really into horoscopes, but it's, it's fun sometimes. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I guess like. Because, like, I guess to be one other question that I did have for you yeah, was, like, I know, like, for models, like, there's always this big, I guess there used to be, I don't know if there is as much now, but, like, this this huge, like, requirement to be super skinny and to, like, have, like, no fat or whatever. But I guess, like, now with, like, this more push for diversity and inclusion, do you, as a model, feel that pressure to be, like, stick thin for designers or is it less harsh as it used to be it's way less harsh than it used to be what i will say is that it's better in some cities than others like new york is probably okay. the best city for inclusion and um diversity within the fashion realm paris is probably not there yet um there are some cities i mean milan too they one of the first things they do which is really annoying is they'll measure you when you get off the plane so they'll actually not even you have to go to the agency to get your keys for the apartment and they'll measure you right away. And most often, I don't know about you, but I get so bloated when I fly. And so like, I am always just so pissed that they ask me to go in and measure right off the plane when I look like awful as well. I like have dark circles because I just did a transatlantic flight and I'm bloated and I, my hair is oily and I don't feel cute at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know so um that is a thing but what i will say is that i i personally have never felt the pressure or been given any harsh critique about my weight i've never been told to lose weight which i'm i mean it, it's nice even if i did hear that though it wouldn't it would it would sting a little bit just because i mean your bod is fantastic Thank i feel you. like everyone's like goal is to look like your bod Thank like you. i swear like <laughs> but you know what it's really i can't really take credit because I don't really do I can't say that I do anything religiously to keep myself looking this way and a lot of people do ask me about if I work out or what my diet is like I was just in Canada and my cousin was like what do you eat like please tell me and I was like I can't I, I can tell you but I told her I told her what I what I eat that day and she was like if I ate like that it wouldn't work and she was explaining that she has a she does a really strict diet of like you know a smoothie here and a smoothie there and then some vegetables and some protein lemon water in the morning and all that stuff and i was like and, and you're not seeing results because if i ate like that i would be even skinnier than i am now and i think it's just a matter of of understanding that some people i mean i can gain weight like when i when i got to montreal i had a tim hortons which is like a dunkin donuts in my building and i would eat there for breakfast literally every single morning and um so yeah so i got what they call the freshman 15. I don't know if it was 15 pounds. I don't think it was 15 pounds, but it was, I definitely filled out and I had like a little bit of fuller face. And um, I think it with age, you kind of lose that like kind of, it wasn't baby fat because I was never like a, a bigger kid. Yeah, you were a skinny I was kid. Always, we both, both of us were. We were always really thin, really thin. But um, I think I just, once I started to get into like my travel thing and, and like the kind of, lack of routine and lack of any real stabil stability or stable schedule like I I don't know I just started to see it like I just started to thin out like honestly so I got my wisdom teeth taken out this week for example mm. and I've only been able to really eat soft foods and I am like washboard stomach right now and it's not because I'm trying but it's just like it's just because your diet changed, you know yeah. yeah and and I can definitely if I try to gain weight I, I will 
but for the most part the diet that I that I gravitate towards keeps me at this weight and I do like to get a decent amount of exercise I like to hike there's hikes everywhere here and I'll go to the Pilates come out route. here man we'll go do a hike together yes the, it's so much fun I love it because it doesn't feel like a lot like a huge like you know I don't I can't go to the gym I don't like going to the gym I don't like doing like the regular gym stuff I like to do classes like Pilates or bar or yoga I don't do yoga much anymore or I do it or I go on a hike but it's not religious I do it just for you know to keep myself healthy and feeling like I'm not in my apartment all day you know but I really don't as much as it is, might be not nice for people to hear, I really don't have to do much other than just kind of, you know, eat, eat. I eat a very balanced diet. I need to eat a balanced diet or else I will be starving. I need to have like a lot of carbs and I need to have a lot of protein and I need to get. A, do you eat a, meat a, a and cheese still or? I do. I don't eat cheese often. Um, I ate a lot of cheese when I went to my sister's house because it's all to eat. <laughs> when I was in Quebec, Quebecois love. They love cheese. They love. I mean, cheese, cheese is great. I <laughs> see so why. Delicious. I cheese love is French delish. Cheese. I love French cheese. It's like free camembert. Oh my god. All of it. Give me some fig jam, yeah, and I will ooh, melt charcuterie, away. Charcuterie, baby. Yummy. Exactly. But um, I I do eat meat. I don't like that I eat meat, but I would. I feel. I, I, just, I feel the I, same I way. Full, babe. Like I, I literally. I, I, <laughs> You're like I need to be full, babe. <laughs> I, I am so hungry all the time. It's ridiculous. I think I just have a really fast metabolism. You no, know? and so do you. I mean, we've always been like this, you know. Skinny, yeah. yeah. And I don't know. That might change because my parents are not skinny anymore. They were both really skinny when they were my age, but they, you know, things change. Life changes. I'm, I'm really, you know, happy and grateful and blessed that I feel really beautiful and confident in the way that I look and I love my body and you know it, it's brought me incredible things you know jobs and career opportunities so I am really I'm grateful but I can't really say that I do much it just kind of you know is yeah and I guess like how do you deal with like the confidence because like I know for some shoots you might be wearing like lingerie or swimwear yeah. and you're yeah you know, in front of all of these people and you gotta, you gotta perform. Yeah. I guess like, how do you deal with that and not like being like, oh my God, like people are looking at me or oh shit, like I have a stretch mark or, you know. It, it like is a difficult thing to get, you know, comfortable with. But I think that at a certain point when you um, do it enough, that's where the confidence comes from. Because I remember when I would go on castings or when I would do any job or any. I would get always a little bit nervous and then it would kind of, you know, hang around at the beginning of the shoot or whatever, beginning of the job, and then it would go away. And now that I've done it and I know that I'm good at it and it's because laundry and swim are two of the things that I shoot the most. So if anything, I get a little bit more nervous on a shoot where I have to be really editorial and come up with really creative poses because I have, I have less experience with that. So I'm still good at that because I have kind of a dance background and I, I love, you know, I love moving and I know kind of what looks good. And I, like I, you know, we were talking about before, I've studied many photo shoots watching Top Model and I watched BS Girls growing up and I would watch Candace Swanepoel videos and how she would move on You set. watched everything you one could yeah, watch. I was, <laughs> I was studying without realizing it. And I kind of, in a weird way, uh, harnessed or kind of wanted to imitate the way that the BS Girls shot and so i i think that's why i feel so confident doing swim and, and and lingerie is because i do it a lot and i feel like i i know how to move i've always i've studied how to to, to model in those you know clothes and and i and i just i feel confident in my body so when i get up there i'm actually excited to perform because that's when I really feel kind of like a bad bitch I feel hot and I feel um I just feel good I feel like I'm in my element so it, it yeah it's a, it's a nervousness when you start out but once you become familiar with yourself and and the setting and the what's required of you it, it becomes more of a fun performance you know yeah yeah for sure I bet. I, I guess, like, for me, I feel like in the beginning, yeah, you would totally be super nervous just because you, you have all the anxiety and, like, any small insecurity that 
you might have about your body. But at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, this is the body you're given. You yes. just got to own it. And, yes. you know, whatever anybody else thinks, like, that's their problem. And it's, it's really, it's problem. easier said than done. Confidence is something that sure. is so tricky. And I'm not perfectly confident and no one is. But um, I think it's important to kind of just ignore, like, just don't, there's, you know, so many things that you can change about yourself. And in fact, I think that if you do start changing things about yourself, there will always be something else that you'll want to fix. And it's kind of a slippery slope. And I think it can become addicting to, to desire to constantly change your appearance because you can change everything at this point. Like, and, and that is not. Especially in LA, I feel like you could definitely change anything. It's not not productive in any way. It's, it's makes your self-confidence worse. I think because especially if, whatever thing changed didn't come out exactly the way you wanted you'll want to do it again or if you really liked the way something came out you want to do more stuff because you just have this huge confidence so i feel like it's i think a lot of people tell me that i have a good you know sense of confidence or you know they that i exude the kind of an energy that is um, positive and 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 grounded and and that and I think that just comes from really liking myself and, and thinking that I'm cool and fun and that I know that I'm nice and I'm I'm kind. And and I just, you know, learn to highlight the things that I like about myself instead of the things that I don't. And I think that can really help just just knowing that you're dope, you know, and, and you bring that energy and, and you lift up others as well. You know, you don't make anyone feel lesser than you and I think people risk you know that when they see me I think people can uh, people tell me I'm intimidating which is really funny to me because I'm literally like such a not intimidating personality I feel like um so I think that when when you bring a good energy to the table people will like you and respect you and then you will also like and respect yourself you know and and that's where the confidence comes from yeah, for sure. I mean, I could totally see how people could be intimidated. You got that bad bitch energy. Like, <laughs> especially, like, when you have, like, all of these fierce-ass shots. Like, why wouldn't someone be intimidated? I would be like, yeah. damn, like, this girl clearly knows her worth. And I think for some people, that can be scary because they're like, oh, shit. Like, she know her worth, so I know I can't fuck with her. You know, like, I know she's going to do what's in her best interest yeah it's funny with social media honestly because if there there is an image that you project of yourself and this is something i kind of have a conversation with myself about sometimes like i only i show this really fierce sexy side of myself on social media and i'm like i think that that's why like people must just see this and that's because i that's the when i feel my most confident is when i'm in that form and in that kind of it's not a character but when i'm in that mode you know yeah you and feel so, like you're in that zone yeah yeah i'm in that zone and that's what i i share because that's the work that that's what like i share my work and so most of the work i'm doing i'm in that zone right and i feel like sometimes like i need to I'm like should i come off as more relatable like should i post like wholesome content <laughs> Just like I'm sick on my bed, <laughs> my guy send me soup. Yeah. I'm like, why do I always have to post? Like, literally, like, but I don't know. I don't know. I just, I'm trying to get better with um, the way I come off because um, I don't think it's an I don't I don't come off in a negative way. I don't, but I do think that there's more more to me than maybe what I show at the moment online. But that's okay. Like if it's I feel like it's not your fault necessarily if someone looks at your image and they're like, oh this bitch thinks she's just <laughs> better than everybody. Cause I mean come yeah. come on, Danielle. Like you have experienced that. Even when we were in high school. Like yeah. I remember I don't know if you remember this, but I remember one time like we went to someone's birthday party and you came up to me and you were like Danielle, like Harsha, this girl just told me like I was a waste of space and like, <gasps> like I shouldn't I breathe that. or whatever because oh you God, were skinny that. and she wasn't. And like, you just happened to be in the bathroom when she was there. And oh, I'm no. just like, babe, that was at the West End. We were at like prom. Yes. Or yeah. <laughs> something. We were at some event. Yeah. And like this girl just came out of nowhere and just that. was like, you don't deserve to exist. And I was like, Danielle, this bitch, like, fuck her. I was like, yeah. that has nothing. I was like, what? who the hell does this girl even think she is? And I'm like, it's easy for people to look at you and just assume stuff about you. 
but it's like you have to realize like there's more to people than what you see or even what you hear like you have to meet them like you actually have to engage with them to see the different you know angles of a human soul like there's just a lot to people and you can't believe everything you see online either like grow up folks instagram is all a lie (laughs) i couldn't have said it better myself babe well how how can how can folks like you know keep up with you and like find out about when when you're off jet setting to to your next show or when you're shooting with your next brand or when you're sick on the couch and in fact do need chicken noodle soup um well i mean yeah my social media i I do update pretty frequently about what i'm up to i don't um really use many uh, platforms besides instagram i haven't gotten on tiktok or anything like that it's not for me i don't facebook anymore like just pretty much use instagram and um I, i post all my travel stuff my work um, they can reach me on there too because that's you know a platform where people can really reach out without necessarily having my personal contact information. So anyone that wants uh, has questions about modeling or um, questions in general, that's that's where they can hit me up, and I'm more than more than happy to reach back out to people. Sweet. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to reconnect with me after all this time and to just talk about all that you have accomplished because. St. Martin has its own professional models out there yeah. doing the damn thing. And I think more people should hear about all of you achieved because you have been working, I swear, since we were kids to be where you're at now. Yeah. And there's still, there's see, still a ways to go. But- I know, exactly. But just to see how far you've come, like, Thank you. and to like know, like, yeah, when things weren't working out and you were like, Harsha, I don't know what's going on. Like, and now to see, like, you're, you're crushing it, like, you're doing what you want, like, empowered working with amazing brands like i am so proud of you you. it's i'm still you know i am still figuring it out and um but it really makes warms my heart to hear you say that because um sometimes i I forget you know you forget in the process where you started exactly exactly to, to to um be grateful and recognize the accomplishments that you have made thus far you know it 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 is that's super nice thank you and i'm so happy i got to talk to you really yeah of course of course anytime and i'm gonna get your butt over here so. yes we're gonna hang out go on a hike and many other things when you come <laughs> down when you come down i'll, I'll show you a real good time gonna... thanks for listening to this episode of the chatterbox if you enjoyed this episode be sure to show your support by subscribing to this podcast and leaving us a review follow us on instagram at the dot chatterbox for teasers and updates 